All right, we are back. And where are we at? We're at the wall. Okay, the wall has two different capabilities for the Scotty here. And let me switch a screen real quick. Okay. Two different capabilities for the Scotty. And one lets them re reduce raids that do not come by sea. By minus, They don't want that. Raider placement from Caledonia ignores forts. I find that one not that exciting. Because... You can just raid from the ocean. The oceans aren't patrolled, so why do you care about the forts? Um, so it might be, but you also, but yeah. Doc also does not want that to be, that event to be chosen by another player. The one that makes the minus two from each target space. So does, does he just take the event to keep them from using it or does he just do a, a command with no feet which would probably be a return command right the problem is, is he's not going to get much from the return command he's only going to get three prosperity he doesn't get to do a settle as well this is a tough event to, to work with you may as well just take the event that lets the dukes Get an action plus full special. No, I think he does the command only. Maybe we should talk to Doc actually. But yeah, let's move that back. Okay, so Doc here. Uh, only wears silk underwear. Can't stand tapping. Like to meet Ruth Gordon. Never justify your actions. Simply do what's right in the first place. Proud of success of business. Solid, innovative, eccentric, dependable. All right, be the innovative thing. There must be some reason that the raider placement from Caledonia ignoring forts is useful. Maybe there's some other event that makes the oceans patrolled that he can uh, raid from. But I've not seen that event, if that's the case. We'd like to get a settlement, because so right now he spent like four to go in and he's only going to get three to go out. It's not a very good return. I think he's got to do it, though. He's got to do it. Okay, he's going to do a command only. Return all these raiders. It's kind of sad. One. This is the first time we've done a return command on stream. Basically, all it does is, like, any place where you have raiders with, uh, with plunder, they go away. And you get a renown for every plunder that they have. Look at my plunder! Um, Alright, so that's going to leave the uh, Dukes with a limited command. Or they get to act first on the next card. I think they will take that. Free to their resources. And... Suitatis. Bonzo already passed up last action doing something. she would like to wait anyway just to see if there's something better she can do there's not really like a very compelling action she could do she'd like to wait till she can get to get a rule she wants to be able to do a feat with a rule so she's gonna pass as well which gives them more money not bad okay Ard re we have the dukes get to act first and then the saxons Okay, we have two dwindling events, or dwindling capabilities. I know there's a different word for those. Um, they're capabilities that go away at the next epoch. We're getting kind of close to that. A Britain free intercepts it dukes, or battles now. Until epoch reduce Scotty raids by minus two raiders each target space after any patrol. Okay, that's pretty good. Free intercepts. That might be what you want to do anyway. Till Epoch, Scotty raids place an extra two raiders each target space. Scotty free raid now. All right. Um, so this is an interesting choice for um, Sarge. So if Sarge 
the, the person he would want to um, free intercept against is the uh, Saxons. And he could do that. And then also reduce Scotty raids. Um, just by doing the event. However, then the Saxons would just get to do another action. Plus special activity. Um, let's look if he can take care of all the Scotty. He can... Basically just needs two cavalry. He needs one more additional cavalry here. He needs probably two cavalry here or um, some federati. Um... Um, and he needs three cavalry there, or federati. So it'd be nice because it would reduce the, the Scotty pressure as well. I think he's going to take the event. get to everywhere except for here that we can do adjacent from here and here and we can do two down to here take these two down to here all right this is good this is looking like a good move we're going to take this off and mark it So he gets to intercept. So basically, if they don't evade, they're gone. But they've got a pretty decent chance of evading 50 50. Poor or higher on this d6, if I remember correctly. They did not evade here. So this is all going to go away. You're going to get a prosperity back. Um, the rest is just lost. But you also. The Dukes get a prestige, which is good. For the Dukes, for Sarge. Alright, we're gonna go here, in Iceni. And there they manage to evade, so they're okay. Nothing's gonna happen. And then here in Kantiashi. There they did not evade. So we'll take, put one prosperity back. Move the other three. Bump the prestige up one. And then get rid of these raiders. And then we need to check again our prosperity because I've been kind of shifting things and talking. All right, so we had a base of 80. We've lost three, four, eight, 11, 12, 13, 14. So eight is 80 minus 14 is um, 66 and prestige is three so prosperity plus prestige should be um, 69 yeah so you're well below your your goal there sarge but you did kind of do a double thing you got rid of the barbarians that are there that you could and you also um made it so that the scotty are going to have a harder time all right so got that right so now the saxons get to like basically raid back again or they could look at this next thing okay this next thing vortigern this is the one that lets them put a um settlement down along with six war bands now last time they did that and it caused some problems because they didn't do the raiding now right now i'm looking at the, the score track prosperity plus prestige is well below what um, the Dukes need to win. So that's not such an issue. Um, control is still high, which means if um, Bonzo is able to shift things to civilian control, um, civilian dominance, then she would win. So doing the event for that is actually not a bad idea. Plus I'd kind of like to try it again, you know, just get some settlements down for free and see what happens. Um, there's not like a great like natural 
thing that they can do next anyway. So that means the Saxons are going to have to pass in order to be able to act on that card and give the Suetatis a full full action. Be right back just a second. Okay, we're back. So, Suetatis, um, they'd like to start ruling because they need to get their wealth up. Um, ruling, you can muster, march, or trade. Marching might be good. Yeah, so let's look at where it needs some like, kind of buffing up. In terms of defensive control. We're looking all right in the south. We're not totally great, but looking all right. Um, now it seems like the Scotty tend to settle in one of these two provinces first. So it might be good to muster those up. You only have four, four militia to work with, so a muster isn't that compelling. Let's go ahead and do the rule first, and then see what where we're at after that. The rule feat. Okay, up to three spaces with Britain control. Each space transfer all Siwatate's plunder to wealth. There is no Siwatate's plunder, because you have not been doing that. Um, either convert two Britain resources into one wealth, or if no duck's piece, duke's piece, Spend one wealth to reduce Duke's prestige by one. I think we're going to just go ahead and do um, work with six of this. So 24. Bump up our wealth to three. So wealth and prestige are equal. I think the wealth needs to be 10 higher than prestige for it to switch dominance. Um, okay, now we can put down some refugees. This is This is good. So we can actually bump bump up our control right now. And actually, control should have gone down one when we lost some population before, last last time we streamed. All right, so we're going to put down these refugees. And we want to put them down somewhere that we can get keep like a firm grip, right? So like this place is kind of promising. Dobuni looks kind of good. Because you want some place, like, you want to put it on the roads, because the roads are easier to protect from the dukes. And also, the dukes are going to want to protect that spot more. And you want to put a place with a lot of prosperity, because the dukes are going to want to protect that spot more. Keep your control high. So... Catavaloni. I think we're going to go there. Put some refugees there. Welcome to Catavaloni. Falauni, you can stay and have a great life. Okay, thanks. All right. Back up to 40 British Britain control. Refugees are gone. And then maybe we do just want to muster, just get some more pieces down. Place one militia per town and hope for a plus of Britain control, one per population. Or a valid site with more friendly than barbarian pieces, replace one militia with, with a hill fort. Or pay two more wealth to replace either two militia or one militia and one hill fort with a town. Okay. Mm. We don't want to pay wealth. We want to keep our wealth. We're trying to get a lot of wealth right now. I think we'll just pick one space. We'll just put them all right here. Protect that new space. Um, and that only costs us two. Be cheap about the wealth, and we're we're good. We're done with this card. So now we're seeing the barbarians are acting together and on cards, and the Britons are acting together. It's it's always interesting. So, the top here we have the eligible and ineligible factions. Um, 
pairings tend to form based on how people choose to do things on cards. And if people don't pass, those pairings are going to main uh, stay constant, right? Um, so it's kind of fun to see how things end up pairing and how long they stay. Um, be interesting to do a study on that with each game. So we've already kind of established that the Saxons want to do the the event on this one, um, our Saxon Dougie, um, which is also pretty good for him because that lets the Scotty act with a, uh, a command plus feet. Um, and he wants the Scotty to be doing things right now. They're not really in his way. They're not bothering him. They're just, they're not anywhere close to winning. Really just needs to be chipping away at the Britons. So if the Scotty are helping do that, why not take the feet and let the Scotty try to do something? Unfortunately, the Scotty, they have that terrible minus two raiders per target space. Now remember, the Scotty, they only roll up to 2d4 in the first place for placing raiders. So 2d4 minus two, that's kind of rough. Although that's really um, the Saxons' life. They always get like a negative because of forts and whatnot. All right, so Scotty, where do you want to put your, your fort there, Doug? Your settlement. Um, at, oh, Contiachi's Hill Fort site. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that removes this fort. We did this last game too. I don't know why I'm acting like I don't know what to do. All right. Remember, Contiachi's hill, hill Fort site, um, the fort there, it's great to get rid of because... So not only is he getting these set, this settlement here and these war bands, he's getting this foothold, which gives him some control. To control, he's a fifth of the way to his goal now. Um, the fort there would normally uh, defend both oceans from, from his raids in the future. So now he's only getting a minus two... To raid from the ocean though really hopefully he keeps the settlement and then he can just raid from there all right so now what are the scotty going to do they have really only one choice again because they're off map they need to raid so where do we want to raid this time i don't think we want to do a deep raid necessarily all the towns are a lot more defended so for the coup de monde to work just to explain this um it basically it has a better chance of working if the difference between the capacity of the place and the number of pieces there is is high. Um, so you the towns are good for Kudamon because they have a high capacity that can hold a lot of people. But if there's if there's like a lot of cubes there protecting it, then it's not so good because um, you subtract that from your die roll or add it into it. You know. Anyway, so the more pieces that are protecting a town, the better. Um, the the hill forts and the forts they don't have near near the um, capacity. I could just tell you the capacity. So the capacity of the settlement is two. That doesn't matter. You're not gonna. I guess you could coot them on if you're going against another barbarian. Um, the hill fort is two. The fort is two. Everything's two except for the town is four. All right. Um, and then the strongholds in Londinium. Actually, that's a place that you might want to do a deep raid, but the Scotty can't deep raid there. I always forget about these, um, the, si the strongholds in the cities, because they also have um, capacity of four. So really you want like one or two people defending. Where could you do a deep raid? You could do a deep raid here and have two defending or here and have two defending. But... I think we saw last time that didn't work as well. So I think maybe a raid plus, and plus you're gonna you're getting minus two people come in anyway. So a raid plus um, ransom would be good. Now, do you want to spend renown on it right now, Dougie? You want to spend renown on your raids? I think you might in some places. Maybe the rule of thumb would be wherever you. can get more than one renown if you get minus two you, you, you might not get anyone not might not have anyone show up for the raid which would just be so sad it'd be good to raid here i don't know if we're spending money on it or, or renown on it or not um we are going to raid i just keep to the hills still 
keep draining these hills. Right here. Right here. You can pick one more spot, right? And we will raid. Yeah, why not? Oh no, there's a bunch of people there. Like if the, if they're gonna intercept and get rid of your barbarians, you want to make a move. You don't want to just like be like, okay, go ahead and take them. Um, oh gosh, this place is completely unprotected. Maybe we want to try for the coup de main there instead of the ransom. What do you think, Dougie? Yeah? Should we do that? You into that? It's not a deep raid, but it's sitting there. You could take that town. You're not going to get enough people, though. That's a problem. So you still got to fight them if you do a coup de main. And you still got to be able to carry the loot back. Um, let's go ahead and raid here, but we're still going to just do the... Um, Ransom. All right, and let's look. So here we'll spend the dollar, or the renown, to do a 2d4. That's a five minus two is three. See, this isn't, it's not that great. Even with the 2d4, that minus two really hurts the Scotty a lot. It'd be nice to say, well, just sit back and wait for the epoch to go, but you, you kind of have to be active here. But let, is, let us kind of just lean back a little bit and just do 1d4s for the rest of them. Okay? Because the most you're going to get to carry anyway is 1. So we'll start here and work our way down. We got one person, one raider. I came because I heard there was going to be so much plunder. Um, three, that's one again. Nope, no one showed up here. All right, but at least you only had to pay one for the whole thing. And we did take five uh, prosperity off the map. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. You can really see how the um, things just fall apart for the Dukes really quickly. Um, and much, much faster quickly for the Dukes than for the, the Britons, because the Britons, they're not losing control anywhere. Except in this space where I, for some reason, don't have a control marker. Is my control marker? And, oh no, I can't move that. It's the camera. The camera stand as well as a lamp. Let's fix it. Forward, 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 forward. Um, I think I, the camera itself also moved. No, no, yes, yes. Okay, well, we know that's Britain control. We don't need a market. Um, yeah, so things fall apart fast for the Dukes if the Barbarians are doing their job, and they are this game. They are plundering. You gotta plunder first thing. You can't just work on settlements first thing. After you get some plunder, then do your settlements. Despite what events you have. Okay, so that's gonna be it for that Barbarian card. We're gonna go to Whale Girl River. Let's move back now that we've fixed that. Turn you down. And we persist. And then get a kiss. Alright. Um, I'll be right back. Right. So, Siwitatis with um, Bonzo. Bonzo. Lower a faction's renown by 10 to a minimum of 5. Um, or select a town where the Saxon warband. Remove that town 
and add one refugees marker to the Suetati's available box. I don't think anyone's going to do that. I don't think either event is that exciting because the renowns are both close to five already, if not five. So I think it's just going to be a Siwitati command plus feet. What do you want to do? You want to keep working on your wealth, right? Just keep pumping that wealth. Gauge. Um, so we're going to rule. I'm going to lower this by six to 16 and add three to the wealth. Really just, I think, a, well, the strategy Bonzo is kind of trying here is to just keep pumping, hitting that rule over and over again as many times she can. Because if she can do that, and, oh, this control should actually be 38 and keep, you know, enough control, then she's got the game. Um, so what she want to do with that rule feat? She could trade to get her money back up. She could muster or she could march. Um, none of those are that exciting. She could battle to get rid of those um, raiders there. But that's really just a prosperity thing, and she doesn't really care about the prosperity of the people. Uh, she just cares about control, and there's not enough raiders there for, for even returning raiders to place that, that many warbands. They have like a 50-50 chance of placing a warband if they try to settle along with their return. So, mustering is not that exciting because she has nothing to muster. Um, she could march. Marching might not be bad. Might get some more people there. She wants some more people there, but her, her militia can only go one space even if there's a road so she can't really even march there she's kind of got to leave that to the dukes now she does have some people here that she, she could march down there maybe that's not a bad move um yeah actually let's do a march and we can march two per origin space so we'll march two down here to londinium gosh yeah you actually have a lot of spaces where you need to march because your towns are unprotected towns are Protected. Um, keep three here. This is your big population spot, spot uh, Bonzo. So you want to keep that well guarded. We'll march two there. And this town is protected. This place isn't very well protected, but not a lot you can do about that. I think we're good. Okay, the event is not exciting to the Dukes, so they are going to pass. Well, they could try to... Let's let's slow your roll here. One, two, three. And see, do you want to just battle here? Because you got two spaces that you could think about. You could battle in one of them. Battling there, what do you get out of it? You get a prestige if they don't evade, which they have a 50-50 chance of doing it. You get two points, basically, on the board, on the track. Is that that helpful to you right now? Or would looking at this next card be better? I think looking at the next card would be better. Let's speed your roll. All right. All right, Saxons are going first on this one. The Saxons, they get... The opportunity to remove two prosperity each and five pieces total other than cavalry or forts from Dabuni and Katavalani. Alright, that's these places here. Whoa. So it could remove all the all the militia guarding that. Um also remove a town just totally get rid of four Britain control just with this one move um, or this is interesting okay 
so we're getting close to epoch time, right? Now, there's not civilian dominance, so that's not going to make it... I mean, Bonzo needs that if she wants to win on this first epoch. Um, now, it could be that the dukes actually trigger this negative event. Because what would it do? They could get rid of every... Well, how should I read this? Remove two prosperity each from these two spaces, right? One is like the kind of mega place with the, that has the refugees. Um, and five p pieces total, other than cavalry or forts, a faction stronghold last in a region. So does that mean you have to remove all the, the militia from both regions before you can even attempt to do strongholds? Or can you be like, okay, I want to move four pieces from here, one piece from here. I remove the militia and the town, which would get rid of Britain control, right? Which would take this Britain control marker below the, the victory level. I don't know. We got to look at the um, playbook on this one. The playbook has details on all the different event cards, and we are going to want to look at that. And this is card number 40. Both regions lose two prosperity, then the... Well, but... Yeah, Dukes wouldn't pick that because they don't want to lose the prosperity. Lose a total of five pieces taken from either or both regions. Place in faction may not elect to leave eligible pieces in impacted regions as long as at least... At least Yeah, I think you could you could just remove four from here and one from there, but I don't think that's interesting to the Dukes, actually. They don't want to remove the prosperity. And I don't know if the Saxons want to spend their time just chipping down the Britons or ch chipping down the Siwatatis when they have, like, kind of some other issues to deal with, such as... Um, they have their settlement here. They would like to keep going. And... They have some raiders here that need to go home. Uh, though I think really what Dougie wants to do is actually just raid further rather than spend a turn where he gets to go first and have the feet and everything and just return one group of raiders. I think he's going to raid from his settlement and cause a lot of problems. And he's going to spend the renown to do it. He currently has six renown. He's going to spend all of that go down to zero and he's gonna raid from his place now does he want to ravage or surprise last time he picked ravage I think he wants to ravage yeah I think Dougie's a ravager so there are only three spaces he can choose then if he's if he's gonna avoid using the ocean which I think he wants to do In one space. Yep. Yeah. Alright, so f he's not going to get any removal here based on. Um, he's not going to have to subtract from his roll based on forts because he's not attacking from C. So he's going to go and. I think you can raid the city, can't you? For three spaces. Yeah, it's a space. Okay. So we'll start with Londinium. I'll probably put the pieces in the ocean because there's really no space in Londinium. And ooh, not very, not very good. Only six. These are in Londinium, okay. But he gets to take all of the prosperity there. Dougie knows how to Saxon. Lower that to um, 57 and 60. And let's go ahead and actually, I'm going to use a little marker so I remember. So I might have to stop here soon, and it would be good to know what's going on. So that marker means that these pieces are in Londinium. Um, let's see if the population drops. It's not. All right, let's go to 
Trebakis. Thank you, Doc, for sharing your dice. Okay, there we got a six again. The famous Saxon six. Five. Six. And that's going to be all the prosperity there. So nor if you don't ravage, you are limited by the population. You can only plunder as much population as the place has. Since you were just like going at it, you were not being careful. You just take it all that you can carry. Um, it's pretty devastating, actually. Let's see if we lose population on Atrabatis. We do not. Which I think Dougie might prefer. I think the Saxons generally might prefer. I don't know if Dougie as a person prefers that or not. Now Regni. Regni with the big seven. Broke the six curse. Now you might think it would be bad luck to roll six, six, six. And it would if you believe in that. But if you think that because of the book of Revelations, and where 666 is the mark of the beast, you would be wrong, because that was like a translation error. It was originally 616 was the mark of the beast, but no one's scared of that. So is it a, is it bad luck because it was in the Bible? It, like, is what was in the Bible make it bad luck, or do is it, is it bad luck because a lot of people believe in it? Is that what makes it bad luck? I don't know. Okay, Saxons did their commands plus feet. Um, shoot, you're in a rough spot now, Sarge, aren't you? You've lost a lot of what you had. Do you want to just get some free Federati and cattle? Yeah, that might not be bad. Just take the event, get the Federati. So let's look at the next one. It's just more Federati. Um, yeah, let's just take the Federati and get on with it. All right. Because you're going to need some people to deal with all these raiders. Why not have those people be Saxons? All right, so now we have a different pairing. We have the kind of more economically focused ones paired, the Scotty and the Siwitatis, and the more like fighty ones paired. I'm going to go for a second and, and talk to this cat, and I'll be back when I'm done with that.
All right, we're back with Lindsay. Lindsay card places more Saxon Federati. You could place it in uh, up here. Um, or Parisi. Parisi actually might not be bad. Um, but I don't think that that's what... Where's our Tribal War? So there's all these cards with the Tribal War shaded event. Remove two Prosperity in each. What shoot you from? Okay, from those two places. Um, hmm. So if the Siwitatis decide to do an action plus a feat, which is probably what they want to do, then the Scotty can just kind of smack them down in Parisian Coriel Tavi, which would make them lose a bunch of control. So although Bonzo would really like, really, really like to um, be able to do another rule to get her wealth up higher than the prestige, or yeah, higher than the prestige even further, she might have to do the event here just kind of defensively. Because really the and she could attack too. There are people to attack. She would lose in a lot of cases though. Unless she mustered, which would make the event still open. And she would have to lose the people in Coriol Tavi. I think she has to take the event and just let the Scotty do their return or do their raid or whatever they're going to do. The Scotty are pretty hampered by that momentum event that, that makes it so that they have far uh, too fewer raiders per space so we're going to go ahead and put um more saxon federati down this time in parisi parisi needs some guardianship uh, these are going to be blue federati we've seen a lot of red federati so far in our games blue federati up there it's going to protect that higher population area Scotty, let's take the command plus blah blah blah. Oh, do they want to return and just get the renown? There's not a lot they can. They can't really settle well with that return. He might want to just raid further, even though it's not great. Just do some more piddly raids. Just do piddly raids all over the place, right? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do more piddly raids. Don't even pay for them. Um, and just ransom with the raids. Oh, I forgot to ransom before with him, actually. Let's go ahead and do that now. And then I'll do further raids. Okay, and it's a uh, five or six he gets paid. Yeah. Do here. Nope. Here. Nope. And there was another place. Over here, yeah. Nope. No ransoms there. Let's do some more piddly raids. Piddly raids. We'll piddly raid here. You can ransom in every space, right? Yeah. Go back up here again. Might as well go here, even though it's not mountains, they would have to spend more money to three, four. Oh, that's good. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. And piddly raids cost nothing, but you also only get to roll 1d4 minus two. So nothing there. Two here. There we go. Two in the place where they're most vulnerable. And it's going to lower this by two. Look at all that prosperity going away. We'll go back up north. Nothing. And down here in Demete. Nothing. That thing really hurt you. 
Um, and the ransom. Okay, you only get to ransom in one spot. This is kind of disappointing. Usually when you do a command plus, a full command plus feet, you get to do something awesome, but not in this case. Ooh, but you do get to ransom in one spot. You get a dollar. That adds to your renown. And you got a little bit more of the, a little bit more plunder. So next time you return, you're going to get more of a return on your return. All right. Here we have groans of the Britons. Appeal to Aetius. Shift to Roman rule with civilian dominance. Ooh, you would have liked that. And place any ten off-map cavalry among Atrabatis, Regni, and Katiachi. Uh, if Roman rule shift to autonomy, no change to dominance. Now, the thing about autonomy is there are some. It makes it, it's a little tougher for the Britons in some cases but it also makes the victory margins kinder uh it makes it lowers where these pawns are the red and blue pawns which is what they need to be have their victory marker higher than um yeah i'm not sure if what's so let's look at sarge's pivotal event here play with at least five prestige and no roman rule okay so you have already have to be Oh no, you can be in autonomy if you play this. If no fragmentation, if no fragmentation, divide prestige by four, round up, then imperium to fragmentation. Add plus ten duke's red resources. Any out of play cavalry beyond five to casualties. Oh, I see. Huh. I can see why that's pretty good. Um, it's like if you're kind of giving up on, uh, you're giving up on the 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 government basically and you're just like i'm going to be essentially a barbarian faction of my own so i'm just trying to think why that might be good for him right now because the prosperity is so low his victory marker at Atani would still be at 60 and he's still a good deal lower than that to the prosperity now some of that prosperity can come back but it's a little trickier anyway it's not his decision right now anyway it is the saxon's turn now they're first on the next card as well Saxon raids always may use ocean or reduce also. Eh. The event on that isn't that cool. I think the, the Dougie just wants to act right now. He doesn't care about the event either. It doesn't bother him. Um, so he's going to just do a command plus feet. Now he just did a bunch of big raids. I think he wants to bring those people home. Right? So he's going to return plus settle, I think is what he's looking at. So he only gets to pick one piece, one one space to actually settle in. Um, and what, is, what does it do with the adjacent to returning raiders? Roll one d six for each such raider. So he could just pick a place that's adjacent to where he's at right now. Um, and they all have. He'll just pick the one with seven, so he'll get to roll seven times. So let's just get all this plunder first. Things are looking pretty good for Dougie right now, I gotta say. That's four, 10, 14. Which is good because he actually had no renown. Like, he spent a lot of social capital on that. He must not know what he's doing. He's back, he's like, look at all this treasure I got for you people. It's food and lamb's blood. And butter crocks. Alright, and then we get to roll seven times. One for each raider. See who wants to, who kind of levels up to a warband and sticks around in Great Britain. It's two. Three. Four, five. This, this man Dougie can roll, and then we got one more roll. Oh, I should use his card. Okay, here we go. 
he only missed one of those, and they were each 50-50. Look how many war bands are here now. I, I don't think the uh, Britons are going to be able to take that back as long as he just sits there. He could just sit there and raid from there. Although, he raided so big before, there's really nothing left. Did I roll? I'm going to have to check back on this video to see if I rolled to see if the um, population went down on all of these. I think I did, but I'm going to check on that. So note to self, check on that. I'll be done here soon. So then I'll go try to find that spot of the video and see if I remembered or not. And if I didn't, I will fix it, okay? So don't stress, don't stress, I will fix it. Um, okay, now here's the interesting question. It's not that interesting of a question. So Sarge could monkey around with one of these events in order to try to change all the rules and maybe get a better, better shake for himself. Shift to Roman rule, civilian, no. Shift to autonomy, no change in dominance. Um, which is actually kind of compelling, but if he doesn't do that and he passes, he gets a, a command plus full feat. Sounds like it might be a little better, even. Can I think of that for you? No. That's tough. Let's talk to Sarge a little bit. And probably after this card, we're going to be done, I think. Sarge is a filmmaker named Sarge. His secret fantasy is to skydive in the rain. An unusual fact about Sarge is he has webbed toes. His pet peeve is sand between his toes. He'd like to meet David Lynch. Personal motto, it could be worse. Most proud of the paintings he's done. Reputation in high school, the good kids thought I was trouble, and the troublemakers thought I was goody-goody. Restless, eclectic, lively. I think he's going to pass. Not go for the autonomy yet. That is a good option. He's gonna let things go a little, get a little worse before he gives up on the on Rome. All right, so he's gonna pass. We're gonna go on to the next card. Could be an epoch, so I'm gonna turn it up. Nope, it's not an epoch. So we'll see you next time. We're gonna finish off this epoch. I think it's gonna be Sarge's turn to try to retaliate against the Saxon invaders. The Saxons have got a good foothold. The Scotty aren't doing much. Just kind of chipping away um, in the west there while the Saxon menace is growing. It's like a cancerous toe here. It's like all black and um, without life. Though really for the cancer, that is life. So you can think about it a different way, okay? All right. Let's do this, Schminker, and stop streaming.